Evening world, it's 2100 in the evening on the 10th of May 2014. And I was going to do a video tonight on the coming full moon, and I will do tomorrow. But I looked at the software, I looked at the astrological software tonight, and I saw that literally within the last 10 to 15 minutes, the sun in the sky has been exactly opposite Saturn, at least when viewed from an Earth-based perspective. Of course, if you viewed it from a sun-based perspective, then the sun and Saturn, the Earth and Saturn are in an exact straight line with each other. And the gravitational pull on the Earth, right at this moment that I'm recording this, between the sun on one side and Saturn on the other, is actually going to be having some type of effect. So for those people that have been feeling under pressure, gravity or stress, especially in the last three or four days, and those who have been affected by Saturn in recent months know that the period of now and the coming few days is about bottoming it out. But you need to look at the structure and the nature of Saturn. I mean, Saturn's got, it's a very bland planet. You look at the surface, you just see blue, maybe a bit of white, occasional cloud streams on the surface. But that, we don't look at its surface. I mean, for a start off, Saturn doesn't have a surface. Like Jupiter, it's a gas giant, and on its edges, there is no surface. It's just ever-deepening gas. But because Saturn is a lot further away than Jupiter, unlike Jupiter, it's not hot gas, it's cold gas, primarily um, hydrogen and helium, which, because it's so cold, forms into almost liquid the closer it gets to the core, and then solid, and becomes like almost crystal, compacting in. And of course, Saturn's principle is that of density, gravity, stress. And with these metals being so cold and so gravitationally compounded in, it's fairly accepted these days that Saturn does have a solid core, but like Jupiter, it's probably minute, probably some form of solid carbon, and that the metals do strange things the closer they get to the centre of a planet. And as we know, Saturn is a planet of structure and pattern and order. So when we see these gases crystallizing into first liquids and then solids the closer they get to the center of the planet, perhaps there's some type of analogy here. Saturn has some very unusual phenomena on its poles. It's got a vortex on the south pole, very much like an ongoing hurricane on Earth. And on the north pole, of course, it's got the hexagon, the six-pointed, the six-shaped pattern that spins parallel with its orbit, with its spin on its axis. No one knows what causes this, but it's well documented. Um, Saturn, of course, has rings around it, which again fits the ancient translation of Saturn as being the planet of restriction, of being held in and limited by boundaries, by circumstances outside of its control. And of course, because Saturn is the furthest planet you can see with the naked eye, at least 98% of the time. And once again, Saturn's reputation for boundaries is fairly established. It's 29-year cycle, 29.48, something like that, 29 and a half year cycle, is well documented in astrological parlance, and many people will know of the existence of the Saturn return. Also, every seven to seven and a quarter to seven and a third years, Saturn goes at 90 degrees to one of its original positions, which is basically the origin of the seven year itch, because four times seven and a third equals 29 and a bit, which is the Saturn return, of course. And this is what makes people under 30 so different from those over 30. Once you've hit the first Saturn return, you're on your second cycle of experience. And of course, the third Saturn return at age 58, 59 is when you graduate from sort of the still learning experience to that of actually doing and becoming. I'm about there now. Saturn's had a bad press over the time. It's been a, it's certainly connected with Kronos. Um, and in many ways, Saturn's representation as the scythe in the cowl with the scythe and the cowl as a skeleton is is appropriate, especially in the ancient times before the invent before the discovery of Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, when Saturn was seen as the sort of terminus, if you like, of the solar system. These days, Saturn's going to be seen in two hundred years' time as the biggest biggest single source of hydrogen and helium in in the solar system. It's going to be fueling humanity for millennia to come. But at the moment, Saturn and its rings and its moons still fairly mysterious. We're looking at Jupiter first. But next time you look at Saturn, don't give it such a hard time. 
you know, it's only really a difficult one for those under 30. After Saturn, after 30, Saturn's much more about patience, perseverance, determination, structure, form, hard, bloody work, self-discipline, and ultimately, success. After all, Saturn is old father time. Catch you later. Bye.